Hello, I'm Alicia Weatherby, Advanced Clinical Nurse Educator for DCH Regional Medical Center and the Nursing Clinical Affiliate Coordinator for the system. All clinical students, preceptors, and instructors must complete this orientation program prior to attending clinicals. Other departments might use this program to meet their requirements for clinicals or shadowing experiences. The DCH Health System is committed to growing the next generation of healthcare providers through relationships with area programs. DCH Regional Medical Center is the cornerstone of the DCH Health System and the third largest hospital in the state. The 583 bed Regional Medical Center operates specialty units for pediatrics, orthopedics, cancer and cardiology, as well as the region's most advanced trauma center and an intensive care unit and the bloodless medicine and surgery programs. Physicians at DCH Regional Medical Center use many of the latest surgical techniques that require less recovery time, including microsurgery, laser surgery, laparoscopic and robotic surgery. The Women's Center at DCH Medical Center offers rooms decorated in a home-like atmosphere and two-room suites and private accommodations are available. The Women's Center is staffed by an impressive team of professionals with the training, experience, and compassion to make the birthing experience safe and enjoyable. The hospital features a neonatal intensive care unit directed by physician specialists and staffed by experienced nurses. Northport Medical Center has been a part of the DCH Health System since 1992. The 204 bed facility houses several important specialty services in addition to the full range of inpatient and outpatient services you expect from a community hospital. The DCH Rehabilitation Pavilion uses the latest advances in rehabilitative care to help patients with spinal cord injuries, head injuries, strokes, and other neurologic or orthopedic disorders return to independence. North Harbor Pavilion offers inpatient and outpatient psychiatric services for adult and geriatric patients. The Women's Pavilion at Northport Medical Center has one of the most progressive and modern obstetrical units in West Alabama area. At the Women's Pavilion, a mother can stay in the same comfortable, well-equipped room from the time she arrives until the day she goes home. The hospital features a neonatal intensive care unit directed by physician specialists and staffed by experienced nurses. Fayette Medical Center, through a lease agreement with the DCH Health System, is a 61-bed rural hospital that offers the residents of Fayette County inpatient care, along with sophisticated diagnostic equipment, surgical techniques, and specialty clinics. A 122-bed nursing home on-site is fully accredited and licensed for intermediate and skilled nursing care. Pickens County Medical Center is a 56-bed county-owned hospital in Carrollton and provides inpatient and outpatient services, including surgical services, an intensive care unit, therapy services, and imaging services. Through these hospitals, the health system serves an 11-county area with over 123,000 ED visits per year and greater than 3,300 births within our facilities. DCH Health System mission statement is to provide high-quality, compassionate, community-based health services to the communities we serve through our employees, physicians, and volunteers in a financially responsible manner. Our vision is the DCH Health System will be the best health system in the nation for patients to receive care, employees and volunteers to work, and physicians to practice medicine. The DCH values listed here support our mission and our vision. DCH is committed to building caring connections through relationship-based care. This model of professional practice involves all DCH staff from administration to staff directly involved in patient care to ancillary staff involved in supporting our facilities. All are committed to placing the patient and their family at the center of caring for others. As we explore the concept caring for others, relationship-based care helps us focus on three most important relationships to build and some tools to use along the journey. In order to be the most valuable to our organization and to have a meaningful experience at DCH, we hope you will integrate the components discussed here for building relationships with colleagues, relationships with patients, and relationships with self.
The first relationship that will enhance your experience at DCH facilities is your relationship with colleagues. You may feel that because you are in a clinical student role, you may not consider yourself a colleague. By definition, a colleague is a fellow member of the same profession. Although you are in training to learn the knowledge and skills of your profession, you are to conduct yourself as a professional and attend clinicals fully prepared, meeting the criteria and objectives of your coursework at the time. In addition to a relationship with patients and families, we can make a huge difference when we have healthy, productive relationships with our colleagues. Listed here are some characteristics that define a positive relationship with our colleagues. What words do you use to describe trust? Think about how patients place their trust in our care. So what qualities do you need to exemplify trust? For colleagues to develop an atmosphere of trust and integrity, there are all these characteristics included. Respect and appreciation for each person's role, open and honest communication, conflict resolution and forgiveness, and visible support. Think about how good it feels to get a compliment and how good it feels to give one. It's one of the easiest double wins in life. I think oftentimes there is a bigger urgency to voice complaints rather than express our appreciation for something. Relationship-based care embraces an appreciative culture that focuses more on the positive way, more than the negative way. I would love to live in a positive environment when I'm at work, wouldn't you? Think about the people you like to work with and be around. They are usually the upbeat and happy ones, right? The people you're drawn to are the people you are happy, who are happy and positive. As you move about your clinical area and the hospital, keep in mind the importance of verbal and nonverbal communication. You're encouraged to engage all you meet in the hallways, make good eye contact, and appear friendly and approachable. In an effort to start a new saying within our facility, repeat to yourself, meet and greet within 10 feet. Expressing appreciation has more impact when you are very specific about it. You could say thanks for your help, but wouldn't it be better if you said, thank you for helping me get that equipment out of the car? Getting that cart was a lifesaver, and I know you were busy. We tend to not tell people how much they mean to us till it's too late and the chance has passed us by. We don't get these moments in time back again to do over. At times, we have a tendency to underestimate the importance of recognition. We just don't seem to thank people enough. In everyday life, people tend to zone out a lot. They move around like guided missiles from one target to the next, doing what needs doing, then refocusing on the next thing that needs doing, and so on. While this may help people get the things done that need doing, it doesn't do much for their relationships, which is rather sad. Because a lot of those things that people do, they do for their families and other people they care about. At work, it's the same. Recognizing and appreciating patients and their families and colleagues. Communication. It's crucial to relationships and crucial to health care. Simply, it's the giving and receiving of information. We know that listening, active listening, is one of the most important parts of communication. Communication involves many components, and in fact, you can teach a full day class on communication alone. But for our purposes, we will focus very briefly on the impact of communication on relationships. A critical goal of good communication in relationships is seeking to understand one another. It's not only exchanging information, but understanding how the other feels about it. To have a relationship, you have to communicate to get to know one another, share your story, know where they are coming from, to form a bond, find things in common. It helps us to build trust and understanding. When we really seek to truly understand each other, many conflicts can be avoided. Communication lets us express appreciation. It helps us understand each person's needs. There are many good forms of communication, but mind reading is not one of them. Why is communication crucial in healthcare? Communication is the number one component of errors and sentinel events. People die. It may be obvious to us, 
that we are sinking, but someone else may not see it. Some people just don't pick up on things. Open, honest communication is needed to build relationships and to maintain and prevent breakdown of relationships. In relationships, there will be conflict periodically. How serious is the conflict? If it's something that affects the relationship or the work environment, it should be addressed. Is conflict good or bad? It's all in how you approach it. What are the benefits of conflict? What are negative conflict consequences of conflict? Conflict occurs in most relationships at one time or another. Is it easier to resolve a conflict with someone you have a relationship with, someone you're close to, or someone whom you don't have a relationship? The key in conflict resolution is to resolve the conflict quickly and preserve the relationship. So how do you do that? We have a tool for that called SBI, Situation, Behavior, Impact. This is a way of providing positive feedback to someone and feedback for improvement related to any situation. It can help guide the conversation in a non-threatening way to resolve conflict. It's easy and it works, but you have to use it. Create the situation by describing the location or the time. An example would be yesterday morning while we were discussing the plan of care. Then describe the actual behavior, what was said or done. An example would be you spoke at the same time another person was speaking during the meeting repeatedly. And the third is deliver the emotional impact the behavior had on you. An example would be Jerry, this morning in the hallway, you asked me for my opinion about decisions for the new model of care. That makes me feel included. Often understanding the impact on another is what allows a person to generate the energy necessary to change. When it is necessary to address conflict, consider the do's and don'ts listed here. No longer are they your patients and my patients. The patients belong to everyone. The patients are our common direction and focus. It feels great to know that your colleagues have your back and that you can count on them when you need them and even when you don't. You know they are there. Support each other by giving that break to colleagues to refresh and renew, and they will for you. Use positive words of encouragement. People have lives outside of the hospital and sometimes our lives follow us to work. Support each other when the other is lagging. Here at DCH, we honk positively. The model of care DCH is committed to fulfilling relationship-based care, places our focus on the patient and their family at the center. There can be barriers that need to be overcome in order to provide compassionate patient care. Our goal is to assist the patient in their healing and enable them to progress toward wellness. Upon discharge, patients will be surveyed as to whether DCH met their spiritual needs and if patients and their families were involved in decisions during their stay and plans for returning home. DCH staff are well on our way with RBC. Look what all we have in place. Remembering these tools will help you in caring for your patients and their families and put them at the center of your focus. ADET is a tool that's used to reduce anxiety and increase compliance through more effective communication techniques. It will help reduce patient anxiety, improve compliance, improve clinical outcomes, and increase patient satisfaction. ADED is the acronym we use to remember our communication skills. Acknowledge the patient with a warm hello. Introduce yourself and other staff and compliment all staff's experience level and caringness. Duration expected for the situation explain the situation, and thank the patient for choosing DCH and ask if there's anything else we can do for them. Bedside shift report is used by licensed and unlicensed staff to ensure patient involvement and in team communication at shift change. Patients are more satisfied with their hospital experience when bedside shift report is used. Caring moment is important for staff to have at least five minutes each shift when they sit down at the patient's bedside and visit about issues, concerns, or news the patient would like to share. Staff tend to be so task-oriented in order to meet the obligations of their shift. 
Patients report this improves the feeling staff care about them. Patient education, discharge education, are most important to HCAP scores. DCH receives reimbursement related to these scores. Patients want to be listened to. They want information explained to them. New meds need teaching related to possible side effects. Discharge patients need teaching and written information about symptoms and health problems to look for after discharge. It's important staff take patient and family preferences into account when arranging needs at home and that the patient and family feel they are able to manage their health at home. Instructions related to home meds need to be included as to the purpose of these medications. No pass zone is our commitment to no matter what our role in the facility, we will always attempt to answer patient needs as they arise. Shared governance allows all staff the opportunity to take a leadership role in policy development, putting patients and families at the center of the focus. So how do we begin to demonstrate caring for challenging patients and our family situations? We should begin by knowing our patient. We have to have that relationship, especially if we're the primary caregiver. Relationships are the core of relationship-based caring. So how do we get to know our patients? Being with means being emotionally present, listening and understanding their health problems, their situation through their eyes. Other ways we can provide caring and compassion, focus on meeting their current needs. We can't fix everything that may be wrong with our patients while they're here in the hospital, but we can make referrals and do our best to be caring to them while they're here. We can make adjustments to special needs such as appropriate size bed, hospital gown, or a large potty chair, nicotine patch for patients addicted to nicotine who can't go out to smoke. If you have a drug addict who's interested in doing something for their problem, a case manager can point them to the best resources and especially if the patient has no money in insurance. There's a huge population out there called the working poor who make just enough money that they don't qualify for special assistance with the health care or drugs. Caring moments are important and sitting down is crucial. Studies show that patients perceive the nurses are more friendly caring, and spend more time at the bedside when they sit. So in caring moments, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it, and it should be said sitting down. And don't forget having caring moments with families when appropriate. Focusing only on the tasks misses opportunities to genuinely care for the patient and the family. Our primary focus has always been care of the patient's body and to some degree their minds with regard to alleviating anxieties and teaching them how to care for themselves. Patient education is for the mind and affects the body. An area that needs more attention is the meeting of the spiritual and religious needs of our patients and families. This is a part of relationship-based care. In ancient times, physicians always focused on these three dimensions. But in the 19th century, we began to shift our focus more on science and technology. In recent years, we have once again begun to focus on the spiritual side. Research has proven when we focus on the whole patient experience of mind, body, and spirit, there are increased survival rates, decreased pain, and increased well-being spiritually and physically. Look for body language that indicates a problem or a need. Don't ignore it when you see it. Don't say, it's probably none of my business. Instead, respond with, how can I help? Is there someone I can call for you? Would it be helpful to speak to your minister or hospital chaplain? You can always call a chaplain who will know someone in the community who can address special religious needs such as Mormon or Muslim, how to get their holy books. There should still be Gideon Bibles in all the bedside drawers. If you're not comfortable meeting a need, there may be someone on your unit who feels more comfortable, there would be someone there to help. Patients and families are joined at the heart. Families should always be encouraged to participate in care as much as the patient's willing and the family's agreeable. Families care for the patients when they go home. They know the most about the patient and are the strongest advocate for the patient. Families often want to help, 
but don't know they can. So ask them if they would like to help. Patient and family education is the most important component of HCAP surveys sent to patients after discharge. Questions include topics like, during this hospital stay, how often did nurses explain things in a way you could understand? Before giving you any new medication, how often did the hospital staff tell you what the medicine was for? Before giving you any new medication, how often did the hospital staff describe possible side effects in a way you could understand? During this hospital stay, did you get information in writing about what symptoms or health problems to look for after you left the hospital? When I left the hospital, I had a good understanding of the things I was responsible for in managing my health. When I left the hospital, I clearly understood the purpose for taking each of my medications. What does caring look like? Do these look like pictures of caring? How many of you have hugged a patient or touched a patient without gloves? Have you ever cried with a patient or a family? How many of you have prayed with a patient or family? These are acts of caring. The third most important relationship is the relationship with self. We talked about the importance of caring for our patient's mind, body, and spirit. It is equally important you care for your mind, body, and spirit too. There are barriers to overcome for maintaining a good attitude and positive thoughts. Martha Washington said, the greatest part of our happiness depends on our dispositions, not our circumstances. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. Winston Churchill. Victim thinking is a state of mind where someone or something else is always to blame. The person with victim thinking does not accept responsibility for what happens to them. Do you ever think like a victim? We all have that tendency. Identify some examples of victim thinking and ways you can stop thinking like a victim. Do you ever judge others' behaviors or complain about things others do that bug you? Negative thinking can be the number one cause of burnout and only hurts yourself, not the other person. If you can't make a difference in a situation, let it go. Remember you are in control of how you feel about your role. We have a circle of influence and a circle of concern. Your circle of influence contains the things that bug you that you can control. When there are things that bug you that are out of your control, then put those in your circle of concern. The core element of RBC is forming relationships with self and others. While you continue to reflect on your relationship with self and make some changes that will create a more healthy balance, will you actually choose to commit to these changes? Even if you fall off the bandwagon, Will you get up and keep trying? What about your relationship with our most important customer, our patients, families, and visitors? Will you choose to maintain an awareness of their presence and work to be kind and thoughtful? Will you make eye contact and speak to them in the hallway? Will you choose to answer a patient's call light even if you're nervous about doing it? Will you choose to enhance the relationships you have with your colleagues? Will you learn to trust them, appreciate them, and support them? Will you choose to address conflicts and forgive when needed? We hope that everyone will choose to make the changes that will move DCH from good to great. It's not a one-time choice, but a choice we make every day. We are responsible for our own choices and beyond that, encouraging others. Even if you are the only one in your program who makes these changes, DCH will still benefit and your colleagues will benefit. You'll benefit from it more than anyone. Why? Because you choose to do the right thing. So you can see how our model of care, relationship-based care, integrates so uniquely with our behavioral standards all employees are rated during performance evaluations annually. Part of your clinical experience is to help you discover qualities that define a good employee. Keep these standards in mind as you perform daily and you will have a positive experience. Some important things to remember about dress code and appearance include wearing your uniform at all times for clinical experiences even if you're gathering pre-conference information or assignments but will not be providing direct patient care. Any official business requires official dress. 
Wear your name badge at all times. Even pre-Krampus assignments and keep your badge visible above the waist. No artificial nails or fingernail polish is allowed. Keep nails short and clean. We have numerous staff and patients who are allergic to perfume, cologne, and lotions. Refrain from wearing these as they will make others sick. No chewing gum or smoking allowed. DCH smoking policy is changing. There will no longer be allowed any smoking on campus grounds. Use at least two patient identifiers by using the patient's name and date of birth when giving medications and treatments. Also use two identifiers to make sure the correct patient gets the correct blood when giving transfusions. Improve staff communications by getting important test results to the right staff person on time. Use medicines safely by labeling unlabeled medicines in the syringes, cups, or basins. Labeling should occur in the area where the medicine was set up. Record and pass along correct information about a patient's medicines. Take extra care with patients on medicines to thin their blood. Find out what medicines the patient's taking. Compare those to new medications and make sure that patients know which medicines to take at discharge. Teach the patient the importance of bringing their up-to-date list of medicines every time they visit the doctor. Prevent infections by using the hand cleaning guidelines from the CDC and use proven guidelines to prevent infections that are difficult to treat, prevent bloodstream infections from central lines, prevent infections after surgery, and prevent urinary tract infections caused by catheters. Identify patient safety risks for those patients that are most likely to try to commit suicide. Prevent mistakes in surgery by making sure that the correct surgery is done on the correct patient and at the correct place on the body. Mark the correct place on the patient's body where the surgery is to be done. Pause before surgery to make sure that a mistake is not being made. At the time of admission, each inpatient is assessed for latex allergy or sensitivity. Please review the DCH guidelines for providing a latex safe environment for those patients. Always place a green armband and use the appropriate door sign for these patients. At Regional Medical Center, student instructor parking is located at the most west border of this map. Across Dr. Edward Hiller Drive from the hospital is a large employee parking lot. Student and instructors may park near the DCH laundry facility at the back of this parking lot. Absolutely no employee or student instructor parking in the west parking deck adjacent to the outpatient center and medical tower. Violators of DCH's parking policy are subject to school notification and action. At Northport Medical Center, not pictured here, employees, students, and instructors parking in designated areas outside the emergency department and outpatient entrance is permitted. Please contact your program clinical coordinator or me if you have any questions or concerns. We look forward to working with you. Please continue with the video for infection control and prevention, HIPAA or confidentiality, and environment of care. These are required in order to complete your clinical student or instructor orientation. Please sign two forms, acknowledgement agreement and confidentiality agreement and send these to DCH Clinical Affiliate Coordinator Alicia Weatherby, 600 Paul Bryant Drive East, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 35401.